It's time to remember the old Roman political wolf Cato, who became famous largely for his speeches against the historical pop star, the conqueror of Gaul, Brutus's best friend, the lettuce man, Julius Caesar. For many of his contemporaries, Marcus Portius Cato the Younger was the embodiment of honesty, decency, and modesty inherited from his father, an ardent opponent of luxury. The old man understood what hedonism would lead the Romans to, the end of Rome. Although Cato the Younger was noted as a prominent Stoic philosopher and a brilliant orator, history remembers him as one of the main supporters of Republican ideas and the leader of the aristocracy in the Senate. Even after his suicide, he remained for many years a symbol of Republican resistance. And if you are confused, we remind you that we are talking about ancient Rome and not about Star Wars. But the best assessment of his activity will not be the fact that his name is not underlined and read in word, but the words of his political opponent, Celestius Crispus. Cato was distinguished by moderation, a sense of duty, but most of all by severity. He competed not in wealth with the rich and not in power with the power hungry, but with the persistent in courage, with the modest in conscientiousness, with the unselfish in temperance. He preferred to be honest rather than appear to be. Thus, the less he sought fame, the more it followed him. We can only hope that now Cato's identity is beyond your doubts, and you will listen to the righteous man of pre-Christmas times, whose only vice was the love of wine and who actually doesn't drink. However, we note right away, this is not the direct speech of the legendary politician, but the presentation of an equally famous Roman named Plutarch. The famous biographer spent a lot of time with him, recording in detail the wise sayings of the Stoic in his famous comparative lives. I will start talking only then when I am sure that it would not be better for me to remain silent. Later, the same idea was summarized in Cato's Couples, popular in the Middle Ages, a collection of edifying short poems and aphorisms. At first, they were attributed to Cato the Younger, then to his father, Cato the Elder, no less a promoter of moral and ethical values. As a result, they found some Dionysius Cato and attributed the caustic aphorisms to his pen. And what's the difference? Cato, though not a relative, the main virtue, keep your mouth shut. He who knows how to remain silent is close to God. The essence of the thoughts of ancient thinkers is simple and understandable, and most importantly, relevant. There is such a tendency to say whatever you think, but in many situations, this is not reasonable. Even in cases where a person uses his tongue to lick someone's ass, sometimes the tongue works too hard and digs a hole for its owner. You must not overdo it with words. People who speak little but succinctly always command more respect because it is better to appear laconic than stupid. Plus, you should soberly compare the scale of your own person and the company in which you are. The Pomelo language is not appreciated everywhere. It can simply irritate your interlocutors. Therefore, there is no need to try to be an indoor Sergei Drobotenko. People may simply not understand the humor and even be offended. The more words that come out of your mouth, the more likely you are to appear stupid. Don't speak unless you're sure people will understand your message correctly, even if she is wise and, in your opinion, a genius. And don't rush to tell a person everything you think about him. Straightforwardness is not always appropriate. You can be sincere. But why expose a person, for example? at someone else's birthday? Everyone has gathered to relax and have fun, and you are spoiling everyone's holiday, just like your grandfather and father fighting. Cato also said, speech can also hide and reveal the human form. Over the years of operation, speech has turned from a method of open communication into an instrument of meanness, betrayal, and other unpleasant things. If you learn to remain silent and say only what is necessary and true, then those around you will consider you a model of virtue. Even if the other day you twisted the neck of a couple of budgies, you just shouldn't once again complain, lament, and remember some mother with an unkind word. 
If it's still not clear, then silence is golden. This doesn't mean you shouldn't stand up for what you believe in. But in the long run, it will be better if you only talk about things that really matter to you. There is little benefit from words spoken just like that, especially in an unstable environment and surrounded by hysterically vulnerable people. Every word you say can harm you or, as they say in the movies, can be used against you. How many cases have there been when you were reminded of information that was told several months ago? For example, yesterday you said that you are not shy about cheating. After all, a man, in your and Napoleon's opinion, does not cheat, but performs a feat in the name of love. And today you tell how happy you are in your marriage and how incomparable your wife is, but people remember, they might let it slip. Before you say anything, ask yourself, is this necessary? If not, then keep quiet. When in doubt, follow the old Indian advice. If you can't say anything nice, then it's better to remain silent. 